Hey guys, okay, we're gonna do a video on this thing. Um, it's it's kind of a weird video. Uh, I already tape recorded this video and I accidentally hit the high speed on the video. So what you're gonna see me is before I got the video going to the right speed so you guys can actually let, see what I'm doing, I had, this thing had an old wedge in it and it had a bunch of nails in there and I was just putting it in the vise and I had popped the wet nail out a little bit and that's that's where I was at when when I uh, went back to regular speed on the video by accident so where we're gonna start this video at is um, where I where I'm popping the very first nail at and then from there on out I, it'll show you everything that we're going to do to this axe it's not done yet but uh, I wanted to throw this in as the very first video because I screwed up and hit the fast forward on the video thing and all my the first three parts of the video was like in a high speed but all it was was basically me talking about this axe and how I uh, was going to modify this axe and turn it into a like a, a viking style carving axe because it's an old Kent pattern axe and uh, because I had already done a video on it and I accidentally deleted the video and the video I, I that I had done was on this one which is basically it was this axe only in a smaller version and uh, I went ahead and modified it and in fact I have a head here that is the exact same head and I went ahead and I modified this thing and ground this out and I made sure when I was grinding it, I kept it nice and cool and I turned around and I modified it into this which is a real light duty carving axe and I love it I mean it works really good but like I said, I recorded the whole thing and then accidentally deleted it, so you guys didn't get to see it. And I thought I was going to do it with this axe to make it up. And then this thing came to me in the mail because it, it was advertised as a no-name axe. This came to me in the mail, and I got to looking at it, and it says Braids Company right on it. And it says something else underneath it, which I can't really tell what it says. Because part of the stamp's gone, but we're not going to modify this one because it's. Uh, I looked up the old company, and it seems like a good old company, and I just really don't want to destroy this old axe. So basically, we're just going to take the wedge out. We're going to rehandle it with the same handle, and then we're going to uh, go ahead and and uh, just clean it up a little bit more and sand the handle down. And, and I, I did all this on video, and you'll see that and uh put a new wedge in it which we also did that on video and you'll see that and we're just gonna basically just fix up this old axe the way it was and this handle i love this handle so we're also i'm also gonna make a pattern of this handle um while it's out or after it's in i can still make the pattern of it i'll just lay it out on a piece of cardboard and cut it out and then put it away and i'll have it and uh with the dimensions obviously so that's where we're at and, uh, you know, uh, enjoy the video and sorry, I kind of cut in and, uh, a little bit of, you're missing a little bit of the beginning of it, but I basically just told you what I had done in the beginning of the video anyways. And most, it was mostly just me talking about how I wanted to do a video on it and modify it. And I really, uh, decided I didn't want to modify this one, but we'll find another one, um, sometime and another Kent pattern. And I will modify it on video for you, show you how I do that. I'm trying to find one that's around two pounds. That way when it's modified, it's around pound and a half, pound and three quarters. Because that's about the right weight that I like. Um, this one's actually two and a half pounds. And uh, I'm leaving it. I, it. You know, it'll make a good tool to put in the toolbox when we move out west. Because uh, I can see me using this to help build a log cabin. Um, especially when it comes to like queuing in between the logs and stuff like that. So, yeah, it is what it is. So, uh, enjoy the video, and I'm sorry for the inconvenience on that one. Nope, it is what it is. So, okay, 
Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and try to get this first nail out. Like I said, I already got it up out of the vise a little bit. I'm just gonna try to really gently, just, yeah. And there it goes. And it's out. A little piece of the wedge came out too, which is good. And there's another nail in here, and I got this screwdriver here. And I thought this might be another nail too, actually. The, all these old handles are notorious for having nails in them. It's just the way they, uh, it seems like everybody fixes them that way. Handle gets it loose, you drive a nail in it. Not that it's the right way to do it, but I guess if you're in a jam and you need to tighten it up, that will work. There you go. There's another one that's loose. And let's see if we can get this thing out. Two nails in. I know there's at least one more here. Probably one I don't even see yet. Okay, let me work on this one nail. That way you guys don't have to watch. But anyways, what I'm doing, I'm just trying to take a screwdriver, pry the nails up just enough to get something on them so I can grab them. So let me get back with you. Okay, so I had to dig, I had to dig a whole bunch of, eh, a whole bunch of the wedge out, and I got all the steel out of it. It's still pretty tight, but I think we can get it loose. And then we will uh, go ahead and refit this thing. And I'm thinking that, I think I can just put this in here on top of a couple wooden blocks because I don't want to screw nothing up. And I'm not really tightening the vise, I'm just it's just sitting in the vise. Then we'll get a hammer. Which I have one laying here somewhere. And I have an oak dowel somewhere. Let me find the oak dowel and we'll try to punch this thing out. Okay, well, here's a piece of pine dowel. We'll uh, try and see if it can even come to loose with this one. And I don't know if that's moving. And it's not. So, the best thing we could do is keep digging this uh, wedge out and hopefully we'll get lucky. So let me go ahead and keep digging on it and we'll see what happens. Okay guys, so I got it. It's slowly coming loose. Um, wasn't really able to dig any more of the wedge out. So basically all I did was, I just took a piece of maple, old piece of maple firewood and I've just been kind of just tapping on it right here. And then I turned around and I just, carefully tap on the back of this but I don't want to hit my handle so you know you gotta be careful about it but it's coming loose uh, and as soon as I get it loose then I'll take the wedge out as well as I can um, actually it's gonna fall off here in a second and hopefully we can reuse this handle if not it's definitely gonna get I'm definitely going to trace it off and make a pattern out of it. Because, uh, yeah, there you go. It's basically loose. Um, let me go ahead and knock this the rest of the way out. You can see it's really starting to come now. Um, let me go ahead and knock the rest of this way out, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's out. Okay, so we got it out. Uh, there it is. What it looks like all out and everything. Um, you can see there's still wedge in there. I will try to uh, 
with a rag and wipe this thing off a little bit. There's some rust on here too, but this handle's not in horrible shape at all. It needs some oil for sure. But we're gonna try to uh, reuse the handle. It's kind of an original handle, I sort of like it. I like the feel of it. This curve's a little big, but that's that's okay. We'll just put a bigger wedge in it. It should be okay. And let me go ahead and try to uh, get a little wood chisel and see if I can't. That wedge will come out. It's just uh, sort of seized in there. Maybe I'll take a saw and make a saw cut on it. Um, let me go ahead and get it clamped in the vise and we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so there you go. All I did, it's it's all out now. Um, all I did was actually, I just put it in the vise and hit it with the saw a couple of times and the teeth of the saw actually drug it right out of place. So, okay, so now, now we got this thing out. Um, I'm gonna give it a little sanding. I'm gonna set it up so it fits a little fit, just a hair further down on the shoulder. And we'll go ahead and try to put this back on and wedge it again. So let me go grab some sandpaper and we'll give this thing a light sanding. So we don't have to take much off. We're just basically trying to uh, clean this thing up a little bit. There's a couple spots right there that I do want to get off there, though. kind of tell where it was digging in and that's the spots I'm sort of aiming at so it'll go down on here just a little farther than it did before Okay, so we got that cleaned up a little bit. Um, probably going to put a little bigger wedge in here. And I'm going to go ahead while I'm sanding, I'm going to sand this whole handle down. Like I said, it's not going to take much because it's already nice and smooth and stuff. So 
I'm basically just taking off a few years of oxidation and making it look kind of a little bit lighter again. Not much though. So let me go ahead and uh, sand this thing up and I'll get back with you. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and try to fit this thing first time and see how it, uh, it's going to go on there. It seems to be going on pretty easy. Um, it's on farther than it was, and that's what I wanted. Tap this on a couple times. I just leave it hang like this. I've done this a few times on video now. I got just go on there and just hang it like this. Just give it a few taps and it'll go on there about as far as it's gonna go. And then I once I get it to a, where I think it's almost on as far as it'll go, I take a pencil and actually I have one right here. I take a pencil and I put a pencil mark up at the top of this, right here, all the way around it, on both sides. And then I tap it a few more times to see if I end up with a space between that pencil mark. And as long as I can tell that it keeps moving, I'll keep tapping this until it's on there good and tight. And see, yeah, that almost moved almost an eighth of an inch. So. But it hasn't moved since. So I'll put another pencil mark on it. And then give it a few more taps. Just like so. Give it a couple more taps. And it's not moving, so a couple more just for good measure. So that's seated now. So now all we got to do is put a wedge in it. And I just happen to have some poplar wedges right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I will measure up the wedge for this so that it's the right width just by sticking it on there like so. And I just make a little pencil mark on it. Let's get in the camera. So I'll put it in there like so, and then I make a little pencil mark on it right there where I know it needs to be cut off. And then I just take a knife and uh, whittle that much of the wedge off. And sometimes I'll leave this, this, this bigger end a little big because uh, it doesn't really matter to me if it jams into there real good because of the farther it jams in the better it jams in the tighter it'll be let me go ahead and trim this thing off though because i don't have well, i guess i do a pocket knife i will just i have it laying right here on the workbench right in front of me poplar being very 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 brittle you can just about cut or soft i should say you can just about cut through it and there you go so I just took my knife and cut it off. So now, just for good safety, I will trim just a little bit off each one of these ends. So it's a little bit tapered. And close my pocket knife back up. And then we will set this back in here, just like so. Working it as far as we can by hand. Do it a few. Do it a few light taps, and then I need to set this thing up on a stump and give it a couple good hard taps. So let me uh, go get the stump set up, and I'll show you what we're doing. Two blocks of wood, 
I put it in my vise. It takes a little finagling. So you don't, you don't want to clamp the set up the right spot. And I just clamp it down real good. And I don't get too fancy. I'm going to leave the, the old wood sticking out. Oh, maybe a quarter of an inch. So I'm basically just going to cut the cut the wedge off. And I should have a little bit different saw for this right now. I honestly don't think I have one here. And by the way, this is not the best saw for the deal for this. It's kind of a got it's kind of a little too aggressive, but it'll work. And if you're out in the woods, that's all you're probably gonna have. So, if you have to do this on the fly. So, anyways, here you go. I cut it off even with this. So now, being that I have a belt sander, I will take this and I'll just sand it all the way around until I get it nice and even. And then it will be done. So let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to do that off camera because I'm not going to move this camera all the way over there because I can't really have a, I don't really have a way to steady it. So let me go ahead and uh, basically all I'm doing is sanding off the new wedge to match the old handle. And I'll probably sand just a little bit of the old handle away just to give it a good new look. So let me do that real quick and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I got most of it sanded off. The rest of this is going to have to get done with a... Uh, file over here because I couldn't get it with the sander. So I'll go ahead and clamp this thing back in the vise and then I'll show you me filing it off, the rest of it off with a rasp. Okay, so I got this wood file and I'm just going to uh, file it. I'm going to try to do it left handed. Which isn't going to work. I'm going to have to do it right hand. Sorry if you guys aren't going to see it. Well, maybe some of it. Okay, so we got her done. Um, she's all filed. Uh, right there it is. It's all in there. Filed nice and even. Um, probably last another 50 years as long as you don't break it off something. But anyway, so next thing I'm gonna, we're going to do basically is just uh, sand this thing down a little bit more. And not much, just a little bit. And... Uh, in fact, there's some dings and dents in the handle, but I'm, a, I'm not even going to worry about them. It's been there all its life. I was just more wanting to get this thing tightened up in the in the eye a little better. And, uh, yeah, the bottom's as tight as it was when I started. The top's nice and tight again. So let me go ahead and uh, we will... Uh, Sand this thing down a little bit, give it a coat of linseed oil, and all that's left is a sharpening. And uh, we got ourselves a 
another usable carving axe, which I forgot to make a pattern of before I took it in there, but that's okay because I can I can just get a pattern of this and pretty much I know how to do that anyways. But uh, yeah, because I this carving axe is actually feels really good in your hand and I didn't realize it because I didn't have this axe before I made the little one but the little one the handles basically the same and I freehand would um, carve that one out and I, I didn't realize that I had actually sort of made a copy of this bigger one I, I made this handle before I even had this axe and it just kind of turned out it just happened uh, I was just playing around with that one and it and I was just whittling it out till it felt good in my hands, and that's what I ended up with. And then when this one came in the mail and I started playing with all of this, I was like, this feels familiar. And that's when I realized it's basically the same handle, just bigger. And uh, I like I like these these ones that have the curve this way, and then they have the curve that way. And you can get a nice grip here, get a nice grip here, you know. Not that I would use this with two hands, but it's definitely a carving axe. And it's a shame that we didn't modify it, but I'm not going to modify something that's still got the name on it. And I was kind of looking up this old company. It seems like a good old company, so I'm not going to not going to screw up this axe by grinding it out. I will find one that doesn't have a name on it or or any uh, markings on it, and we'll do it for that one. But this one's going to stay the same. And. Uh, because bas basically, I can get my hand under here pretty far anyway, so we're okay. Um, yeah, it's going to rub a little bit. It is what it is. Um, I get this one out, I'll feel like I'm 100, 150 years in the past. So let me go ahead and sand this handle down. And uh, I'm not going to make you guys watch me sit here and, and sand it. But basically, I'm just going to give it a light sanding. There's a couple spots where it did get dinged up and there's a little bit of a sharp edge but I'm just gonna kind of round them off and uh, you know just make it smooth again not that it's not already smooth but you know I'm just kind of giving it a sanding it'll help when we put the linseed oil on it then it'll help soak that linseed oil in a little bit better too so let me go ahead and sand this up real quick and we'll give it a coat of linseed oil Okay guys, so uh, there you go. We got it uh, all sanded down. It's ready for oil. New wedge. It's all seated good and tight. Um, something I didn't notice about this Axo, and it doesn't bother me that much. It's a, This is a really tight grained uh, handle, but, but if you look at the grain on the end of it, it's going the, exactly the opposite way that it should. But uh, being that it's only a little hatchet handle, it'll probably still last another 20 years. Um, so I'm not going to worry about it. But anyways, it, if it would ever break, then yeah, I would replace it. And the grain should be going up and down like this. But right now it's going across. Um, somebody made the handle a long time ago. And, and it's probably worked for them for 50 years. So, you know, you can't really knock it. Because this is pretty old handle. And... Uh, It'll work. So, the only thing that's left is sharpening this thing, and I am not doing that on camera. I've done it. You can go back and look to look at 15, probably 15 videos where I've sharpened an axe in some way or another. So, uh, you know, plus there's a lot of other guys out there do it, but I will tell you that I, I'll just file this with a file on both sides. Hopefully, it's soft enough to file with a file. If not, then you got to kind of grind it and file it and stone it and everything else but usually you get a good file and it's soft enough you can file that <laughs> and then i uh take a piece of emery cloth cloth uh, emery paper a couple couple three different grits put it on a wooden block and i go ahead and and basically strop this thing with the emery cloth until i get it to where it's almost razor sharp and then i get to strop out and i strop it and uh I'll probably keep the same angle that's on this because it's already at a pretty smooth angle. And like I said, this is going to be carving habit hatchet. I'm not going to go out in the woods and start whacking away things with it. And, you know, we'll see how it works. Um, it's going to be used as a light hewing axe, too, I think. It's a double bit one. So um, the advantage of this is I can go this way with it or this way with it. So if I'm. Uh, 
hewing like the top of a log, this will be handy because then, um, because I'm really right handed. So if I have to start hewing this way with a left handed axe, it's just not going to work. So if I'm building a log house, I'd rather be hewing this way with it. And then, and then I can turn around and just use the same axe and hew this way. But if I have to use a left handed axe and actually try to, it just wouldn't work for me. So this one should. It'll keep me from going, having to go from one side to the other because I'm not going to buy a left handed hewing axe just for doing that when I, I, don't, I don't really hew left handed anyways. It just doesn't work for me. This one will because it's a double bladed. And then we got that Holtz Brooks that is got it's a right hand handed person's hewing axe if that makes any sense and uh, then I have I have two or three more of these um, American style ones um, they're not actually considered a Kent pattern they're just an American hewing axe which are they're both double bladed too I actually I, yeah I have three of them that are double bladed and I mean I've got a lot I've got a lot of things going on with the hewing thing but uh, there you go we will uh, sharpen this up and I will just show you a picture of it when it's all sharpened up. I'm going to go ahead and put some linseed oil on the handle right now and sharpen it and you can see what it looks like when it's all done. Okay guys, um, it's actually the next night and I just finished up our axe and I got her all sharpened up and she's linseed oil on the handle. Um, a little bit of linseed oil on the head too. It's a makes a really good protectant for rust. Let me move this camera around see if I can give you a better picture of the edge on this thing. Um, it's it's got some hair on it, uh, but it's it's hair popping sharp. I mean, this thing will uh, it'll it'll take the hair right right off. Thanks. I don't know if I'm going to do it on camera or not, but here, I'm not really into shaving myself, but yeah, it just, it just shaves the hair right off there and uh, leaves a little flat spot on your arm with no hair on it, but anyways, and Anyways, I wanted to show you guys it. It's all done. Um, nice, nice hewing axe. Uh, you know what? Let me get a measuring tape and I'll give you the dimensions. Yeah, right. So, it uh, when I was when I was putting the edge on it, I noticed that the one side was a little longer than the other side. Where it looked like they had taken. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was this top side. They had taken more off this part off this end than they have here. So, and there were some big chips in it. So I kind of sharpened it almost all the way up and then I took the file and it, it seems drastic but I ran it right across the top edge and uh, re-rounded this thing up and made it all look nice and even again. And when I was sharpening it, you could see where it looks like it's probably a laminated steel, so which is a saw, two, two layers of soft steel with a hard steel in between. But it almost looks like that's what it is. I'm not sure if it is or not positive but it's got a five inch cutting edge so that's pretty good five inches wide um, the head itself is seven inches seven inches long and I was told it weighs two and a half pounds I didn't weigh it um, if it is two and a half pounds it's pushing two and a half pounds it's I would put it at two and a quarter myself but it might not be it might be two and a half it's kind of hard to tell that quarter inch of course linseed oil on the handle and the overall length of this thing is 16 inches just a hair under 16 inches so you know it uh it's going to work okay um anyways wanted to show it to you it's all done uh, i gotta make a leather sheath for it but that's not a big deal so it's a Braids and Company, Braids Company, Axe from England, um, English Kent style. Not going to modify it, too nice to modify as far as I'm concerned. 
make a I'll make a leather sheath for it and it'll be uh, totally done and I will uh, put this in my toolbox uh, anyway so uh, if you like the video like share and subscribe and I just wanted to say thank you for watching and um, you know share my videos I'm, I'm trying to get some subscribers built up here I'm I think I'm at 130 right now maybe not even quite that high uh, I had a really good month this month picked up almost 30 subscribers but the uh, last couple of weeks it kind of stalled out. I don't think I've had a subscriber in almost two weeks. So, I don't know. Um, I know my videos are long. I try to make them... I try to make them decent. I know they get a little boring, but I'm trying to put a lot of information into a video. So, it is what it is. Uh, like I said on some of my other videos, my videos are one of them deals where you should get a cup of coffee and, and relax and watch it. And if you don't like it, don't watch it, you know. But uh, anyways, I just want to say thank you and uh, keep watching and subscribe and share. And thanks.